hello students welcome to my channel today we'll start with a new chapter that is cell as we all know every organism for its formation at least a minimum requirement is a cell that is why cell is considered as a basic structural and functional unit of life based on the number of cells there are two types of organisms are present unicellular and multicellular okay before beginning the chapter we'll try to discuss about the discovery part if talk about the discovery of a cell the first cell that was discovered by robert hooke if we talk about robert hooke he is the one who has discovered the first dead cell now where he observed this dead cell in the cork section it was been observed in a thin slice of cork section we observe, when he observed that under the microscope he found a complex honeycomb like compartment and this framework is due to the cell wall property and he called this one as cellula right which is right literally means a cell later the first living cell that was discovered by and they won levenhucker so if you talk about levenhuck he got the credit for the discovery of the first living cell where he observed rbc cells bacteria protozoans and spermatozoa later if you talk about the discovery of nucleus now the credit for the discovery of nucleus that goes to robert brown if you talk about robert brown he has discovered nucleus later after many years right cell theory has been predicted so if you talk about the cell theory right that was initially given by two scientists who are they number one that is sladen and number two schwann so if we talk about sladen so what is his individual contribution he worked on plants right he examined different plants and he came to know that all these plants are made of many different type of cells and having tissues right and sladen is a german botanist is a german botanist then what about schwann he is a british zoologist now if we talk about the contribution of sladen what is the contribution of him right he examined plants is his contribution he examined plants then what about the contribution of swan right so if we talk about the contribution of swan he worked on animals right animal cells and he came to know that they are covered by a outer lining which is called plasma membrane right and he also predicted that presence of cell wall right is a unique property of plants okay so these are their individual contributions now when it comes to cell theory what are their together right proposals with respect to the cell theory they predicted that all living organisms are composed of cells and their products now that becomes the initial framework for the cell theory right that was given by sladen and schwann so what is their contribution right with respect to the cell theory all living organisms all living organisms are composed are composed of cells and their products but they fail to represent right the origin point of the cells so because of this right not predicting of origin point of cell this became a incomplete cell theory later right another scientist has given a complete framework for this cell theory property so who is that R rodolf vecho if you talk about rodolf vecho so here i am taking the point right rodolf vecho so what he has given he has given a statement right regarding right the completion of cell theory what is that omnis cellula e cellula what does it mean that means all cells arising from 
pre-existing cells. So that is how he has given a final framework to the cell theory property. So what does that mean? All cells arise from pre-existing cells. Pre-existing cells. Because of this contribution, now the cell theory became a complete cell theory. So here, if a question is given, on whose contribution cell theory became a complete framework? That is Rodolf Vecho. Now, if a question is given like this, how many people has given the contribution for cell theory? So how many? Sladen, Schwann and Rodolf Vecho. So three things you have to take over here. Now, it means if you are taking an organism, it should be made of cells and their products. Right now, there are certain organisms, right? There are certain structures you can say, okay, that will be a better word, right? There are certain structures out there which may not be having a complete framework of a cell. Now, such kind of things cannot be qualified under cell theory, it means they are considered as exceptions to cell theory. So, what are those exceptions to cell theory? So, here, exception. So, if you talk about an exception to cell theory, that includes virus. Viroid, prions, right? So these things they come under exception to cell theory overview. Overview of cell. So two topics we'll try to compare. One is plant cell and animal cell. In reference to plant cell, I'm taking onion peeler. And in reference to animal cell, let's take human cheek cell human cheek cell right so this is in reference to animal cell right so if you are observing okay already we have said a point in case of plants what Schwann has said presence of cell wall is a unique property of plants so here the outermost covering of onion peel right that was observed as cell wall where this one is absent in case of animal cell then what is the outermost covering or is the delimiting structure in a human cheek cell or else the animal cell that is plasma membrane so what is the point that you can relate here the delimiting structure in an animal cell is plasma membrane so let's write the point the limiting structure the delimiting structure now whatever it may be the plant cell or animal cell Right, where there all the metabolic functions that takes place or chemical reactions that takes place, right? So in both the cases, right, the main arena for all the cellular activities that takes place in cytoplasm. So what is the main arena for all the cellular activities? That is cytoplasm. So this is considered as a main arena, right? Okay, let's come on to, right, the other part of discussion here. So here I'm taking the comparison between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Now if you talk about prokaryotes, in what way they became different from eukaryotes? They doesn't consist nucleus and they don't have nuclear envelope. So here, nuclear envelope. Here I'm taking the point, nuclear envelope. The nuclear envelope is present here and the nuclear envelope is absent here. Not only this one, the membrane bound cell organelles are absent in the prokaryotes. So let's take that point. So here, membrane bound. Membrane bound cell organelles. Cell organelles are present here and here, the membrane bound cell organelles are absent here we are not saying that as cell organelles are absent we are saying it particularly as membrane bound cell organelles are absent so what are those membrane bound cell organelles that are present it includes mitochondria right microbodies and it also includes lysosomes it includes plastids it includes vacuole so these are some of the things okay which are absurd right in case of eukaryotes but these all things are absent in case of prokaryotes 
Okay, fine. Then what is that which is commonly present in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes? So that is ribosomes. If you talk about ribosomes, you have to remember at this point, it is observed in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes, which is a non-membrane bound cell organelle. Then, in case of plants and animals, is there any non-membrane bound cell organelle apart from these ribosomes? Yes, in case of animal cells particularly, it consists of one of a non-membrane bound cell organelle that is called as centrosome. It's present in case of animal cell. So, if a question is asked, what is the non-membrane bound cell organelle that is observed in animal cell other than ribosomes? The answer is centrosome. Now, so apart from this one, there are different sizes of cells are present. So if you talk about different sizes of cells, based on that one, some important points we'll observe. Smallest living cell. Smallest living cell. You can say it as smallest living cell or a smallest prokaryotic cell you can say. Right? Now, what is that smallest living cell? Mycoplasma. Mycoplasma and formerly it used to be called as PPLO that means pleuronemonia like organisms whose size can be ranged between 0.1 to 0.3 micrometer of diameter. Next one, largest, largest isolated single cell. If you talk about largest isolated single cell that includes egg. Of an ostrich. Likewise, the longest cell. So, if you talk about the longest cell, that includes now cell. So, these are certain properties, okay, which you have to focus from the introduction point of view. Let's see some of the different kind of structures which are being represented in the NCRT. RBC cells. These are round and biconcave. Do remember this point. These descriptions are also important where we have different kind of questions using these frameworks. Next one. White blood cells. They are amoeboid in shape. Next one. Columnar epithelial cells. They are long and narrow. Next one. Now cells. They are branched and long. Tracheids. They are elongated. And do remember this point. There is a special case is there about Tracheid, what is that? They are nucleated. They are nucleated when they are younger. They become a nucleated at maturity. Right? They become a nucleated maturity when they become mature. The same property can be shown by RBC cells also. They also are having nucleus yet young and becomes a nucleated at maturity. Likewise. Mesophyll cells are there, they are round and oval. So if a question is given, right, out of the following, what are the different type of cells that can show the property of round and oval? That is mesophyll cells. Okay, enough for the discussion. We'll try to solve certain questions. So how we are going to solve the questions, okay? I'll give you 10 seconds for every questions. You can observe, you can try it. Later, we'll try to discuss the answers for those questions. Let's try to solve the questions now. Let's see the answer. Rodolphe Virchow first explained that omnicellular, e-cellular, it means, so what we have studied earlier, omnicellular, e-cellular, that means all cells arising from pre-existing cells. So what is a suitable answer here? That is B. New cells are formed from pre-existing cells. Next one, number two. Rodolphe Virchow has modified the hypothesis of Sredin and Schwann to give the cell theory a final shape. Which of the following statement was added by him in the cell theory? So, what is the point? So, this is the connection to this question only. Right? Similar properties are present. So, what is that? All living organisms are composed of cells? No. 
all living organisms are composed of products of cells no all cells arise from pre-existing cells so that's a suitable answer next one coming to question number three which of the given cells is round and oval in shape i already said i repeated also what is that which is round and oval in shape mesophyll cells that's good and if a question is asked like this out of the following what is a cell that is a nucleated at maturity and observed in plant cells answer is track it so that is how you can connect the question next one you can solve these questions completed so let's try to discuss the questions here who got the credit for the discovery of cell using a thin slice of cork so who used a thin slice of cork to represent the dead cell robert hooker very good main arena of cellular activity in plant and animal cells is a so what is that main arena for all the cellular activities in plants and animals cytoplasm cell theory is not applicable to I already said this one as well the exceptions to cell theory virus viroid and prions so the suitable answer is all the above smallest living cell and largest isolated single cell respectively are so smallest living cell that means mycoplasma you can take right? mycoplasma or pplo you can say isolated single cell what is that ostrich egg cell so that you can take so here number d that's a suitable answer we'll go for the next question so here are the previous year questions so in every discussion okay we'll try to follow like this where we'll take some practice questions and followed by from the same topic okay what are the previous year questions that are given that also we'll observe it in the similar sequence over the concept omnicellular e cellular regarding cell division was first proposed by so already known question only right first and second question are connected to this one Who has given this one rudolf virtue next one size of pplo is right it ranges between 0.1 to 0.3 micrometer of diameter so what is a suitable answer here number a that's a suitable answer that's all for today in the next session we'll go with some more topic right especially we'll start with a prokaryotic cell discussion then we'll go with certain questions and previous year questions that is how we are going to go in this procedure thank you